Hi kiddos, welcome to Storytime with Mrs. Tar. Today we're going to read a book called I Ain't Gonna Paint No More. The melody to the song that I'm going to sing is based on the melody of a real song called It Ain't Gonna Rain No More. One day my mama caught me painting pictures on the floor and the ceiling and the walls and the curtains and the door and I heard my mama holler like I never did before Ya ain't gonna paint no more Oh, I ain't gonna paint no more, no more I ain't gonna paint no more That's what I said, but there ain't no way that I ain't gonna paint no more So I take some red and I paint my head. Now I ain't gonna paint no more. Oh, what the heck gonna paint my neck? Now I ain't gonna paint no more. Still, I just can't rest till I paint my chest. Now I ain't gonna paint no more. Guess there ain't no harm if I paint my arm. No, now I ain't gonna paint no more. I ain't gonna paint no more, no more. I ain't gonna paint no more. But I just can't stand not to paint my hand. Now I ain't gonna paint no more. Then I see some black, so I paint my back now I ain't gonna paint no more like an Easter egg gonna paint my leg now I ain't gonna paint no more still I ain't complete till I paint my feet now I ain't gonna paint no more I ain't Gonna paint no more, no more. I ain't gonna paint no more. But I'm such a not gonna paint my. What? Y'all don't think cause there ain't no paint, so I ain't gonna paint no more. Alright, I hope you guys enjoyed my story this week. I'm gonna try to get back on next week and record another one for you. Miss you guys a lot. Hope you guys keep singing at home. Bye. Mr. Donut's awesome map network. It's the it's the awesome map network. Network, yeah, yeah. Math network. We're back with another episode of the Mr. Donut's Awesome Math Network. Today we'll be discussing converting improper fractions into mixed numbers, okay? What is an improper fraction? An improper fraction is any fraction in which the numerator is greater than the denominator. So for our first example, we have 17 over eight, or 17 eighths. Step one is to divide the numerator by the denominator and see what we get there. So. When converting, the denominator of our mixed number is going to be whatever the denominator is of our improper fraction. So in this instance, we have a denominator of 8. We're going to keep that denominator as 8. Let's get our purple marker. Can you find it? Founded it. All right. So let's ask, how many times does 8 go into 17? What is 17 divided by 8? Well, if I know my 8 times table, 8 times 1 is 8, 8 times 2 is 16. 8 times 3 is 24, and, well, that's not going to work because it goes beyond 17. So, we're going to write the whole number of 2. That whole number, that, that big number, is the um, amount of times that 8 goes into 17 without going over. However, 8 times 2 is 16. It's not 17. 17 minus 16 is 1. That's our remainder. We haven't seen remainders in quite a while. Our remainder becomes the numerator of our mixed number. So 17 eighths improper fraction gets converted to a mixed number of 2 and 1 eighths. Okay? And that's basically saying that it goes into 17 twice and there's one left. Okay, we have a second example down here. 
we have 33 sevenths or 33 over 7. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to start with our denominator of 7 and ask ourselves how many times does 17 pause? I'm sorry, how many times is 7 going to 33 before going over? Well, go back to our 7 times table. 7 times 1 is 7, 7 times 2 is 14. 7 times 3 is 21, and 7 times 4 is 28. 7 times 5 is 35. Too much. So we're going to go with 4. 7 times 4 is 28. Again, there's a remainder. 33, I'm going to put a little quick thing box over here. I'm just going to write it over here in my little box. 33 minus 28 is 5. That is our remainder. When you take seven, when you take 33 and divide it by seven, and our remainder of five becomes our numerator. So the improper fraction of 33 over seven gets converted to the mixed number of four and five sevenths. I hope that was informative. If it wasn't, let me know. I'll do another one and another one. Mr. Donuts, awesome map network. It's the, it's the awesome map network. Network, yeah, yeah, math network. Hey everybody, I thought it'd be really cool um, to make a video to share with you where we could kind of think about and reflect upon um, what it means to be our best self um, and also make a little art as well. So let's think about that big question. Who is my best self? Well, to kick that off, let's all either look down, close our eyes, and try to think of someone that we really look up to. Someone that we admire. And while we try to think of a person that we look up to in our minds, let's try to think about also why we admire them, or why we look up to them. Well, the person you're thinking about I'd have to imagine, is definite, definitely admirable. Let me put that word up here. And that's a big word, right? But with big words, we can use other words so we can kind of figure out what that means. So someone who is admirable does the right thing. Someone who is admirable makes good decisions. Someone who is admirable makes others around them feel good. Now, the cool thing is, when we think about the best version of ourselves um, and what that is, that version of ourselves can be someone that someone else looks up to, someone that someone else admires. So we can be that person for somebody else. Now, we're going to make portraits, kind of like best self selfie um, and we're going to do that by drawing our faces and we're also going to draw ourselves in the picture holding up a piece of paper and on that piece of paper we're going to write down some words about what our best self should feel like or how we want to feel in that moment um, or you know what that best self is so i'm going to be using a marker so we can all see on the video but i would recommend just a pencil and write on a piece of paper so if you need to, you can pause the video right now to go grab those materials. Okay, so on your piece of paper, let's start by drawing either an oval or a circle, and that will be our face. Underneath that, we're gonna draw a rectangle. That rectangle represents the piece of paper that we're gonna be holding to write those words about what our best self looks like or how we feel or what we want to be in the version of our best selves. So on your self-portrait, you can start by drawing kind of in the center, one circle, two circle, and three circle. Just like that. Looks kind of silly right now. But these two circles will become our eyes. This circle will become our nose. We can kind of make a line stretching up. And then we can do the bottom of the eye. 
bottom of the eye, add a couple dots. We can add our eyebrows and all the features of our face. Now you can follow my steps or you can kind of just get creative, right? Self-portraits don't have to look like you. They're just kind of inspired by you. I'm then gonna add my mouth. And I'm gonna try to make it smiling because my best self is definitely happy. I'll add some ears, my neck. Oh, and then I need hands holding my paper. So I'm just gonna put two hands holding my paper. And while I make this best self selfie, I'm gonna be thinking about how I wanna feel in that moment when I feel really good about myself, when I'm the best version of myself, when I'm that person that I want other people to admire, when I wanna be admirable. So now we're gonna think about details that look like us. So I'm gonna draw my hair. And even though it's up right now, maybe I'll draw myself with my hair down. Oh, I need shoulders. Right? And I definitely need to put on my glasses. I have those on every day. There we are. And I'll give myself a shirt. And then maybe the rest of my body coming down. My arms. My hands. Now again, if you're using pencil, you can kind of erase things, but I'm using marker. So when we're our best selves, you might have noticed, I have some words to help us. How we want to feel. How we want to act. So think for a second. When you're your best self, when you're your happiest, when you feel really proud, what words describe that? I think one of those words for me is kind. I think when I'm my best self, I'm kind. So I'm going to write kind in here. Hmm. Oh, also, when I'm my best self, I'm definitely calm. And when I'm my best self, when I'm really feeling like I'm someone that's admirable and trying to do the right thing and making good decisions and trying to make other people around me feel good, I think helpful is a good word to use. Especially being at home, we can be helpful to our families. And I know it's hard right now being home. Sometimes you're stuck inside with your family and you're not always the best version of yourself. So it's important to remember that meta moment and those cool down steps you can take. Sometimes making art can help you cool down, bring you back. And one more, I wanna include a fourth word. Oh, I think understanding is a great one. When I'm my best self, I definitely wanna be understanding. Great. So I hope this video helps to really think about who that best version or your best self is. Um, and even though sometimes we might get upset or angry and not feel our best selves, just know that that is a passing moment and we can remember what that best self is and try to get back to it. And you'll always have this drawing to help you. Now, if you have coloring supplies at home, go ahead, get creative, add things to the background. I think I'll leave mine just like this for right now. I'm really looking forward to seeing your pictures of your best self selfie. Hello, boys and girls. My name is Mr. McConnell, and I'm a science teacher in the Bronx. For today, we're going to be looking at three different states of matter, and we are going to be talking about whether or not these different states of matter, a solid, a liquid, or a gas, has a set shape. Do solids have a set shape? Do liquids have a set shape? And do gases have a set shape? Well, let's look at this simulation and let's find out together. Very easy, very simple stuff. Solids. You can see right here that this is a solid. I have four different solid ice cubes and they're resting on top of each other. You can see the water molecules inside of these ice cubes. They are very closely stuck together and, well, here's our question. 
Do these ice cubes have a set shape or do they not have a set shape? Let's pour the ice cubes into our glass beaker over here and let's see. So do these ice cubes have a set shape? One ice cube in, two, three, about. Okay, so our four ice cubes are in. Did the ice cubes change shape? No, the ice cubes did not change shape. The ice cubes stayed exactly the same. They only changed the container, but the shape of these ice cubes stayed the same. And why is that? Because that's one of the properties of a solid. Solids have a set shape. Good. Let's look at liquid next. Liquids, now our water molecules are bouncing all over the place. There's a little bit more energy inside of them. And how do we know there's more energy? Because the molecules are moving around more. And also, we've gone from negative one degree Celsius, which is freezing temperature, to 21 degrees Celsius. This is about 70 degrees, uh, 70 degrees Fahrenheit. So we went from freezing ice cold solid to now it's 70 degrees. Now we've given these molecules a little more heat energy and now they're starting to bounce around a little bit. So liquids, do liquids have a set shape? Do they have a defined shape? Well, let's pour this liquid into this container and we're going to see if this liquid has a defined shape. Let's pour the water in and see. Okay. Water is getting poured in, and it looks like, to me, the water has absolutely changed its shape. We have gone from the shape of this glass container into the shape of the bottom glass container. So the water is taking the shape of the container that you pour it in, and you guys already know that. You can take a cup of water and you can pour it into another glass and it will take the shape of whatever glass you pour it into. Now the water takes up this shape of the glass, but I want it to go into this shape. I can just pour the water back. So liquid does not have a defined shape. I can pour this water onto the floor. I can pour this water into a bowl. I can pour it wherever. The point I'm making is that this liquid does not have a defined shape. The liquid will take the shape of the container that you pour it into. And you guys can see that in the simulation right here. Our last one is gas. This is the last state of matter. So how did we go from a liquid to a gas? Take a look at the temperature. 21 degrees Celsius, about 70 degrees Fahrenheit nice and warm. Now we're at 101 degrees Celsius. This is over 200 degrees. This is about 212 degrees Fahrenheit. This is the temperature at which water as a liquid will turn into a gas. So when you start boiling water, this is the temperature about 212 degrees that this, that this phase starts to change liquid into a gas. Does gas have a definite shape? Does it have a definite shape? Well, let's see. Let's pour the gas from this glass into the other container and let's see if it has a definite shape. Okay, it looks like the gas is going all over the place. Not one molecule, oh, one molecule has gone in and has not gone out. So does gas take up a definite shape or excuse me, does gas have a definite shape like a solid? No, a gas does not have a definite shape like a solid. You can see, you can, put a, you can put gas into a glass container and cover it and keep the gas inside of this container. But as soon as you remove the cover off of it, the gas goes wherever it wants to go. It's going left, it's going right, it's going up, it's going down, and it's spreading all around the area here. So gases do not have a definite shape. And I want to show you a quick example of that. I boiled some water in a tea kettle, so water started as a liquid, and now I've 
increase the temperature on it, and now you can see the water as a gas. It does not have a definite shape. It's going left, it's going right, it's diffusing into the room. So state of matter has changed. It's still water inside of here. What you're seeing coming out is water vapor, but the state of matter has changed. Whenever you guys are thinking about water, just remember water can be a solid, it can be a liquid, or it can be a gas. It's all made out of H2O. It's all water molecules that you guys are seeing here. It's just when you increase the temperature or decrease the temperature, you're changing the state of the matter, whether or not it's a solid, ice cold, a liquid, a little bit warmer, or a gas, which is very hot. Okay, everyone, I hope you enjoyed this little science experiment, and I hope to see you soon. Have a great day and continue learning with uh, your remote learning. Have a great day, everyone. Bye-bye. Mr. Donut's Awesome Map Network. It's the, it's the Awesome Map Network. Network, yeah, yeah. Map Network. Oh, the big action here. He back. So, the other day, my friend, the Mr. Donuts, he do a video on the multiplying fractions. But surprise, he made a mistake. Clearly, he tired. He the busy man from busy land. But it's okay. He tagging the big action to help him out. Now, some people say out there, oh, what makes the big action qualify to tag in? Oh, I don't know. Maybe this gigantic tag team title? Oh. Look at that, baby. You know what this means? This means I'm the best tag team champion in the whole world. The world in a big place. Shout out to the big O. Okay, but the belt kind of heavy. Let me get to the math. Let me put it down. It's really heavy, baby. It made out of real champions. So the first example we have is a two over three, two thirds, times a four over five, four fifths. Now, if you saw the video before, when you add and subtract the fractions, it's crazy, baby. So much movement. But let me tell you, multiplying fraction is a peasy, baby. Simplifications. Let me show you what you do. First of all, the first step is all you have to do is multiply the numerator times the numerator. The numerator, you know, the top. Like the big action on top of the tag team world. What's two times four? Eight. Not six, Mr. Donuts. It's okay. He's tired. He's taking a nap. Two times four is eight. What's three times five? Fifteen. That's right. Now, why are we multiplying those? Well, it's the bottom, baby. The denominators. You know, the bottom. Like everybody else in the tag team division. Three times five is fifteen. So the final answer, eight over fifteen. Ho, oh, not bad. Not done, baby. Another example. Numerator times a numerator. Top times tops. 3 times 6. That's an 18. And then 8 times 4. Can't make a mistake again, baby. i would be crazy. It's 32. Oh. But I look at that fraction. And I go, is there any way... To simplify, you know, make it easier, make it simple, straightforward. Like when someone say, who the best? The big action. Clear, simple answer. I think we could take out the fraction and simplify it. I know because the 8 and the 2 are both even numbers. I could divide by 2. 18 divided by 2 is 9. Mm -hmm. That's a 9, pa. And 32 divided by 2 is 16. Now, the, the, the 9 and the 16 don't share no more commonalities, so I'm going to leave it just as it is. Final answer, 9 over 16. Now I can put the marker down, pick a belt back up. Oh, so heavy, baby. Like I said, made all the real champions. There you have it, baby. How to multiply the fractions. Mr. Donut's Awesome Map Network is the... It's the awesome map network. Network, yeah, yeah. 
Math Network. Good afternoon, musicians. So I hope you did some music making today in your homes. And I want to share with you a goodbye song. Now, yesterday we did a hello song. So, so today we're going to do a goodbye song that we can use when we go back to school. And also at home, you can use it when you're finished music making at home. So I'm going to sing it twice so we can get the lyrics down. So this is how it goes. I'll play it one more time so you can get the words. All right, here it goes. Come, my friends, and gather round so we can sing goodbye. We'll sing and dance another day. So long, farewell, goodbye. All right, I hope you liked it. Practice it at home. Bye.